yaide, opi u yaide, opi u yaide, look at me. Ladies and gentlemen, once upon a time, there lived a group of people called the Luo people. The Luo people, they lived around Lake Victoria, surrounded by steep hills and mountains. On top of those hills and mountains lived their neighbors, the Nandis. The Nandis were amazing warriors. They were amazing warriors. They could run up and down the mountains for miles and miles without getting weary or tired. And because of this, they would often attack the Luos and all the neighboring tribes at night, plundering all the cattle and killing all the men. The Nandis were amazing warriors. In fact, most of the Luo villages were survived by nobody but widows, old women, and children. And in one of those lonely widows, in a lonely house, surrounded by lonely midwife, a woman toiled in labor, and she gave birth to a baby, a rock had baby called Luanda Magere. The baby was called Luanda Magere because when the baby came out, the baby came out with a full set of thick curly hair, a set of false teeth. The baby came out with big ginormous biceps. The baby came out with big ginormous neck. The baby came out with big ginormous calves and the baby's back was as wide, as, as wide as a turtle. The baby was so big that during delivery, the poor woman, she bled profusely and she gave up the ghost. And so, the poor Luanda Magere had to be raised by his old, tired grandmother. And because he had no father, no mother, all the other kids in the village, they teased him. They made fun of him. At the age of 12, he was accustomed to going to sleep, tossing and turning. No one wanted to play with him because they said, you are a little bit awkward. You are too big. You are too strong. You are just awkward. And so poor Luanda Magere grew up in this life of just being alone. Nobody could play with him. Nobody could understand him. One day, while he was tossing and turning in his papyrus mat where he slept in, in his grandmother's house, the Nandis attacked. The Nandis attacked fast and furiously. The Nandis came. Oh, they attacked, they attacked, they attacked the Lord. All the Luo warriors were asleep. Everybody was asleep except for one person, Luanda Magere. And when Luanda Magere woke up from his sleep, he, he looked around. He didn't have any arrow. He didn't have any shield. He didn't have any spear. He didn't have any club. All he had were his fists and sheer will and determination. And so, he rose up from his stupefied slumber and just went outside in rage and he started to punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, push, punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, push, punch, punch. I want you to do this with me, okay? Let's go. Punch, punch. Elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, push, punch. You got to do this with me, okay? Are you ready? Punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, push, punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, faster, punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick. Push, push, punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, faster, punch, punch. 
Push, punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick. Before you know it, Luanda Magare had knocked all those Nandi warriors, killed all of them. When everybody woke up in the morning, the Luos were surprised. What happened? They lay all the bodies of the Nandis. And that's when they discovered Luanda Magere caused all this havoc. And Luanda Magere's fame spread like wildfire in the Serengeti. Everybody knew him. The Nandis continued to attack several times after but they lost miserably his fame by the time he was 18 years Luanda Magere was so famous the king the Luo king himself said Luanda Magere I am giving you my daughter as a wife and the, the king himself said Luanda Magere to preserve the secret of your strength you shall remain married to my daughter the Luo woman and Luanda Magere was married. Later on, the Nandis tried to attack again. And of course, the result was the same. Luanda Magere, elbow, elbow, punch, punch, kick, kick, push. They could not make it. The Nandis had to convene a meeting and say, hey, 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 enough is enough. This Luanda Magere, he's killing us. He's killing us worse than pandemic. He's killing us worse than coronavirus. We need to do something to stop him. We cannot do We cannot continue this futile attempt. We need to make peace with the Luos. Because fighting Luanda Magere is impossible. We need to make peace with the Luos. And the king said, let's offer my daughter, my only daughter, as a peace token to the Luos. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nandi daughter, she was beautiful. The king's daughter, she was gorgeous. Her teeth were as white as milk. Her skin glistened both day and night. Her long legs, as she walked, her nose sat beautifully upon her face. Her ears, her long neck, like that of a giraffe. When she walked, it, it was almost musical. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And when she walked backwards, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. That's, that's how beautiful she was, almost musical. And when Landa Magere saw her, uh oh, she fell, he fell in love immediately and he married her as a second wife against better judgment and they lived happily ever after end of story no her story cannot end like that her story has to have more twists and turns yes her story has to have more diversions we are just beginning hope you hope day hope you beginning. The story is just beginning. Luanda Magere and the Nandi woman, they got married. But one day, while Luanda Magere's first wife, the Luo woman, went on a journey, Luanda Magere became very, very sick. He had a fever of over 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, I said it. He had a fever of over 135 degrees Fahrenheit. His body was just burning. Beads of sweat rolled upon, formed rivers on his body. He was drenched in his own sweat. He was sweating profusely. He could hardly eat or drink anything. His wife, his Nandi wife, was not a rapid response nurse. She was not a frontline employee. She tried everything she knew, but nothing was working. She tried some sips. No, nothing was working. Luanda Magere was deteriorating fast. He was going down fast. Ladies and gentlemen, Luanda Magere's Glasgow Coma Score was below five. Glasgow Coma Scale of below five. We have to intubate. 
But there were no ventilators back in the day. So nobody could vent. Ronda Madigan could not be intubated. He was going down. He was going down fast. He was going down. No one to help him. All of a sudden, right before he passed out, Ronda Magere said, Nyar Nandi, meaning daughter of Nandi. The way through my body is through my shadow. The way through my body is through my shadow. And the wife, she did not understand what Nanda Magere was saying. Because she had tried everything. She had tried injection, but the needles would break because Luanda Magere's body was too strong. She had tried blade, but the blades would break because Luanda Magere's body was rock hard. She tried everything to inject, but nothing could penetrate the rock hard body of Luanda Magere. Nothing was working. Everything she tried was a futile attempt. And Luanda Magere said, Nyar Nandi! The way through my body is through my shadow. What? The way through my body is through my shadow. Inject my shadow. Put the medication in my shadow. And that's the only way you're going to get through to me. When she had this, she took that razor blade. And she looked at Dona Magere's shadow where the head was. And she took that razor blade and started cutting. All of a sudden, she noticed blood was coming out of Dona Magere's forehead. She cut some more on the shadow. And the more she cut, the more blood came out. The more she cut, the more blood came out. And she took the medication and she smeared the medication on Dona Magere's shadow. And she could see the medication going into his Rock hard body. Ladies and gentlemen, Punde si Punde. Luanda Magere's fever broke. The following morning, Luanda Magere was as fine as a fiddle. And the woman, she was like, The way through his body is through his shadow. The way through his body is through his shadow. This is the secret to Luanda Magere. <gasps> she kept her mouth. She could hardly breathe. A day passed, two days. On the third day, she took off running. When everybody was asleep at night, she took off running. She took off running like Usain Bolt late at night. She took off running like a Liu Kipchoge, running up. Nyar Nandi ran up those hills of Nandi Hills. She ran all the way to the top late at night when everybody was asleep. And she woke up all the villagers of Nandi. The way through his body is through his shadow. What are you saying? The way through his body is through his shadow. She kept bumbling. The way she told her father, Daddy, the way through his body is through his shadow. What are you saying? The way through Luanda Magere's body is through his shadow. She told them. And then Luanda was like, What are you talking about? Daddy, the secret is out. If you want to kill Luanda Magere, don't go for the body, go for the shadow. Huh? Don't go for the body, go for the shadow. And when the Nandi people heard that, oh, oh, everybody, the women, they broke out. Woo! They ululated. I want to hear you ululate. Woo! I can't hear you. The Nandi women, they ululated. They were so happy and they said, let's not waste any time. Let's go attack right now. Let's go attack. They gathered all the able men and they went down running. And you know those Nandi men, they could run. And they came down running.
boom, 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 boom. The battle ensued all night when Luanda Magere woke up. Oh, oh, Luanda Magere. And you know him. Punch, punch, elbow, elbow, kick, kick, push, punch, punch, elbow, elbow. Luanda Magere battled all the Nandi warriors until the break of dawn. He had killed all the Nandi warriors by himself. Because it was night, nobody could see his shadow. Luanda Magere battled all night. And by when the sun woke, sun woke up in the morning, Luanda Magere was tired. He started walking back home. After the fight, he was walking back as a victor. All the bodies of the Nandis were down there, laying dead. And as he was walking back, he passed off a Nandi warrior who was not dead, but was pretending to be dead. When Rwanda Magere walked over his body, this Nandi warrior remembered the way through his body is through his shadow. And he pretended to be dead. When Rwanda Magere had walked past him, the man he stood up and grabbed his spear. And when Luanda Magere was walking, he came right from behind with his spear in his hand. Before Luanda Magere could realize, the man jabbed the arrow deep into Luanda Magere's shadow. And Luanda Magere, he staggered back. He staggered back a deep cough emanated from the bed of his stomach as if to rip his ribs apart. And when he coughed, nothing but blood came out. Oh, oh, the rock, he staggered. The rock, oh, oh, the rock, the rock, oh, run away, the kid, oh, the rock staggered. The rock fell down. The rock is down. The rock fell down. Ladies and gentlemen, where Luanda Magere fell down and gave up the ghost, there's a big rock. His body turned into a huge rock. If you go to the land of Sidhu right now, there's a big rock right there. And it is believed if you sharpen a knife on that rock, your knife will never be dull again. If you sharpen a spear, your spear will kill anything you aim at. If you sharpen your arrow, your arrow will kill anything you aim at. Ladies and gentlemen, if you take I-94 all the way to Sidhu, you will find the rock is right there. If you take I-96 west, go down past the bridge and get down to Sidhu. Yes, you will find the body, the rock. It's still there of Luanda Magere. And that is the end of the legend, Wanda Magere. Thank you.